Shakta Connolly to uh, put her. Can we mark the car here? I guess Falcherov, I guess Bahari and Catherine, I guess Ganairi Lathi the first new. Ní pas nú að tána níst það þú ann kúpli mér og blínur 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 og Cúpla ceisteo na crúa le cúr agam, agus fi me tóca leis an méid imochtí a tá fuida rain, réim se lehan agus tógri íntoca o údaras na gwéltach te gudji cultúr so tá sa agus agus bo watlum obar a slaaf a chéile ach ag an pwyntse sa tá tá ceisteo na le cúr so tá so í me le solas tógra gan solas is doha Major Lesh and Kulra, for your gear, Agus is a scalia mehain, Agus Tombe T. Fear, the Ferdin of Pibley, Agni Ferdin of Pibley is a niche, is Ferdin of Privajok, Shinanaib, a so Nifajer Smuinov at Ain Anum at all, co me Elunuk, no solace. Ego ex a major thought hardly had. Anyway, I can't think of a more inappropriate name, really, at this point, in light of the history in relation to this. I have to declare that I was on the council for a period of time during this, and I, um, it's a difficult topic. I, um, the word solace, there's an absence of light, really, in the way this was handled. So let me just deal with a few quick questions in relation to it. Um, and again, just to mention, as a councillor, I and a number of other councillors, I have to say, struggled in, to ask questions in relation to this. And let me put on the record, and I'll be coming back to this later in relation to Ferris Nguelga and other projects, we're a small country, small cities, and very often there's not a reward for asking questions. So, which is what we've seen here on the public accounts, but it's extremely important. And in relation to art, which I'll come back to, there's a certain element that one is a philistine if one questions. So let me just get that out of the way first, uh, as somebody who has promoted the arts at all level in, in my different roles. So the auditor finally, for Solis, gave up the ghost, didn't he, in 2016, I think, was 17? Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. So let me just be clear, in 2016, the note I have from the controller and auditor general, in October 16, the Auditor of Solis resigned due to concerns regarding corporate governance. And the following year, in 17, I was gone at that point. And in, in 17, Solis went into liquidation. Do you know now why the, the Auditor left? No, we don't. I, um, Deputy, I think... Um and I think at that point, Solace, we no longer had the relationship with Solace. The relationship was with Element Pictures, I think, at that point. Let me stick with this for a sure, minute. Yeah. And excuse me if I'm a bit direct. You see, I, I'm impressed by your statement, and I'm impressed by your open statement, that you were going to learn from mistakes. OK. And I realise you've inherited this. So, and, and you've taken on board the two very serious recommendations. So the first question is, what have you learned in relation to the auditor leaving? Has anybody followed up on that? I, I guess, I suppose there are learnings from the whole project. No, no, just from the... The auditor left. Obviously, finally he left. Has anybody in your department followed up on that to learn from that or to find out about the nature of these concerns? Um, we haven't, but I understand there, there is an investigation ongoing from the charities regulator um, in relation to the, in relation to Solace. Um, we haven't. Just clarify that for me. The investigation by the charities regulator. The charities regulator yeah. launched an investigation at, um, in 2017 yeah. um, into the operation of Solace, and that that they haven't concluded their final report as far as we're, we're aware. We're going to conclude that. Have you been in contact with? Them? We have, and we've cooperated yeah. fully with them. Yeah. Absolutely. And when is, when will that report be ready? I, I don't, don't know actually, but but. Um, I would assume it was kind of mid-2017, I think. Do you know what, what started that from the charities regulator? I assume it was the fact that Solace went into liquidation, the fact that its auditor had resigned, and the fact that it was a public project that, that, uh, that prompted it. Well, I think one of the reasons was that it was supposed to be a public project, but it became very much a private project. So you haven't done any investigation yourself in relation to that, why the auditor left? 
you're relying on the charity. Well, no, I think we'll await the outcome of the of the charity regulator's report, and we'll see where we take it from there. Okay. Um, let's go. Let, let's go back on this and just the overview from the department. Yeah. Um, Councillors as elected members meet every two weeks, quick, not quick meetings, but lots of items on the agenda. And they repeatedly asked, in fact, for presentations from Solace. The report before us lays the responsibility almost insofar as it comes under the control or not regenerate your department. I, I believe there's also questions in relation to management, but for today it's your department. And there was absolutely no supervision of this project. I think, Deputy, there, there was supervision. Okay. Uh, Tell me, were you aware of the trading losses that Solace had between 2011 and 14? Was the department aware of the trading losses? No, okay. Was the department aware? Uh, th this project was approved back in 06 or 07 by an independent assessment, mm. wasn't that right? There yeah. was a former county manager on the assessment board. There was uh, a former architect. And there was somebody from the uh, Irish Film Board, was it? Or was it the Arts Council? It's Council. The Arts Council. Yeah. And so they assessed this project and said, give the thumbs up to this project. Councillors had nothing to do with that. Management locally had nothing to do with it. And it was under the access was funding was going to be. So three experienced people gave the thumbs up to this. And it goes forward and was supposed to be a two-year completion. Isn't that right? There are site investigations that are not comprehensive, it would appear, looking back. Is that right? Yeah. You'd agree with that. And the site investigations, <clears throat> the department doesn't seem to have been aware of those either. A second one was, okay. which yeah. ones were you aware of? I think there was, the, the, we were aware of all of them. There was a site, an, an engineering and site investigation and an architect's um, survey, yeah. I think were the two surveys that were carried out. What, what was carried out? And, yeah, and they were overseen. So there was a, a, an engineering survey and an architectural survey, archaeological. an archaeological survey. Um, and we have, we had the department had an architect um, consultant. consultant. When did that happen? The, uh, very early on, in the very early stages of the project, and our own architect uh, reviewed that, reviewed those surveys, that and, and considered that they were appropriate. What, what, what did your what did your survey find? We didn't do the survey. We no. The survey was done by Solis, yeah. and our architect um, then considered, you know, considered the report of that survey, um, and found that it was adequate. Oh. You can refer. You can allow any of your uh, colleagues to uh, respond if they have more detail. They're free to Absolutely. respond themselves. Thank you, to Thank you Chair. Is Solis a private company, or they yes. a semi-state? Are they a private company? Private company. Private. Totally private. Yeah. Totally private. Mr. McCarthy, could you maybe just clarify that for the yeah. just private for private company, private yeah. company. Yeah. not a state agency? Okay, that's fine. And any of the witnesses are free to speak if they have more details. So just to say that to yourself, yeah. But you can free to take whatever question you like. Sorry. Solace has gone into liquidation, yeah. and uh, uh, Element Pictures have taken over, which is a private entity, which run the Art House Cinema in Dublin, and they have a lease on it for 30 years, at which point it should revert to the City Council. Okay, and the City Council have a charge on the property. Okay. The and the Department has a charge on the property too. Okay, and so if we go back to the original <coughs> business case, th have you read the Controller and Auditor General's chapter, any of you? Oh, I have. Good, great. Many times. Lovely, lovely. And he's raised lots of questions in relation to that, yeah. going back to the very basic business case and in terms of how many would attend and the sensitivities around that and doing a sensitivity analysis about how many would actually attend and it was supposed to be making money after a few years. And you've looked at all of that. You've looked yes, at all absolutely. of that. Yes, absolutely, okay. yes. Can you talk me through what you've learned from it, how it happened? I think um, in terms of the attendance numbers, um, in terms of what happened, this went on from 06 to 18. It's still not fully opened the site in 18. Okay. The serious questions have been raised by the controller and auditor general. He makes two recommendations, but he highlights a number of inadequacies, let's put it like that, in moderate language. You know, terms like Rocky Horror Show have been used in my time on the council, you know. So in terms of the inadequacies 
raised by him in terms of absence of supervision over a very long time. For example, when this went out for second tender, the department was unaware of it. Yes, and I mean, I think that that, that is true. I, I wouldn't say there was a total absence of supervision. In fact, the department did with Galway City Council, and it was a very difficult project for all concerned. We did intervene at very critical moments in the project. Um, so when, when uh, Solis went out um, to contract uh, without consulting with the department, we actually refused to make any more payments to them um, until they came back with a business plan that involved bringing in private sector funding. Um, and which they subsequently did. Um, we also, I mean, the Irish Film Board, we identified our own architect, identified the fact that project management was an issue with Solis. Uh, the Irish Film Board offered a project manager to Solis. They didn't take up that offer. Um, I think at, at various check, I mean, various checkpoints, there were detailed submissions done in the department. We did consider everything, including stopping the project. Uh, we liaise very closely with Galway City Council, and I do acknowledge the work of the council. They work very closely with us, um, and then we agreed that Galway City Council would take over the project management. Actually, it took them quite some time to take it over, mm. and that emerged during the prime time, which I was unaware of. It emerged during the prime time that the council actually couldn't even go into the building after they had said they would take it over and after councillors had said okay the majority except one one courageous person I have to say it wasn't me it wasn't me we gave we, in the end we said because there was a hole in the ground and because the manager said I'll take a hands-on approach but actually it emerged in the prime time that the manager couldn't even enter the building a year after he had told the council that isn't that right I'm not aware of that. Do you I, to, I think Galway City Council that did put in place a project manager, but it is safe to say, and, and that was the, the basis on which the Minister then agreed to provide funding, but it's safe to say that the relationship with Solis and the operation of that uh, project manager with Solis wasn't effective and didn't resolve the, the problems. Okay, and so I, I might leave it to my colleagues to ask more questions on this, mm. but certainly for me, it's an example of utter failure of management. <coughs> what started out as a wonderful idea at around was four million became six million or was it six million became eight million? I can't actually remember. Be taking the cost of the building or not? It, it, yeah. <coughs> this takes in well, yeah the site. Yeah. So we, we have we have a site in Galway that remains underwater. We have a site investigation that was carried out by Twice that seemed to not recognise that there was granite, that it was flood potential, that endangered the house beside it that had to be knocked and rebuilt, and a, a, a road taken out of action for a very long time. So I, I can't think of anything more extraordinary than what's happened now. So I'm going back to ask you what you've learned. And what you're saying is you're going to take on board the two recommendations that where problems emerge, you'll be in like a shot to do a risk analysis and you'll monitor much more clearly. Okay, so let me move forward there now. To Let, let me look at Forrest Nguelga and let me put my hands up. I'm absolutely Tomanta Dunguelga, the Reddy and the Lifter, the Forrest Nguelga, who's not ready at our school. I'm going to ask you a question about the Kursi Kisa and I'm going to ask you So, Forrest Nguelga has moved, and as chair of the Irish Committee, I had concerns at the time, not, not concerns, concerns in relation to, as I do generally, about renting buildings rather than owning them. I, I think it's a very bad policy that we're renting, renting, and it's something I hope we come back to, Chair. But in relation to Forrest Nguelga, can you give me an outline of what they were paying in the two buildings where they were, what they're paying now? And what, more importantly, what oversight do you have, have of that project? And starting with, sorry, now I've thrown too many questions, so show me what, where in your accounts the rent paid by Forrest Nguelga for the accounts you have before us, and then the difference. Deputy, so um, the background to the first move was that... No, no, just the appropriation accounts, 2016, where do I find the rent? Do you find the Three is the overall, yeah. There is a separate item. Okay. There is funding, uh, block funding, as I understand it, provided to um, 
Forest and Gael, or, or, uh, and out of that they make their own decisions. Their accounts are audited by me as well in conjunction with my northern uh, colleague and um, they're available to be scrutinised by the committee as well. Very good. And so you audit that separately? Uh, it's audited I separately, yeah. So just in relation to that, unfortunately that was one of the names that came up this morning that hadn't replied. Chairperson Fergus Naguelga, in relation to the letters that went out in December, the chair, the chair of this committee wrote out to all public bodies in December. Uh, Seventy-five percent of the bodies wrote back and acknowledged. Fergus Naguelga was one, I'm afraid, that jumped out, that didn't at the top of the list, uh, and was simply looking for an acknowledgement. In, and the, we were writing out in relation to delayed accounts, not, not just Fergus Naguelga, but 25 percent, including Fergus, didn't even respond and still haven't responded three months later. So, so I don't see the rent that they were paying. Okay, so I'd be happy yeah, to follow great. up on that with great. Forrest on that particular point. Um, the rent that they were paying was yes. 472,500 per annum. 472,500 per annum. Yeah. And the new rent is 593,000 per annum. But within that 593, there's a period of 15 years where we're rolling in some of the fit-out cost into the annual rent as opposed to paying it up front. Um, the old lease came to an end in uh, 2017. There were two properties, one, on, uh, one in Marion Square and one in uh, Frederick Street, um, both, coming, both coming up for renewal at the same time. Um, so in view of the pressing accommodation requirements, First Agegla submitted a comprehensive business case to the two sponsor departments in August of 2016 in regard to a proposal to, to move to the new headquarters in Amiens Street. What was, the, what was the overall cost at that point? 500,000. 500,000 for what? Back in 2016. The overall, the overall cost of... of... Two things. One was what was the proposed rent and what was the overall cost of moving from the premises? The... the <coughs> relocation costs, um, uh, first of all, the the Kami Dura Nakray and Rawa, Egevora Sakimot, um, uh, at the Yavi. I'm a Koramu Gamalishkin, Neil and Lok Dirtsa, a Tomisha Fivruama, a Gazantain Roda Thai Tastal Wemshin of Fragri, Majula Kesh de Jiraka. So Tong Kul Ragam, so Kad Kad eaten the Kostish at Thai Gesh, or he's a Bogaja, a Gazahiv Nikisaja. And Kostas at Thai Gan, um, Again, like he's full hour, no, Kuke, no, 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 and for us, the and and for us, Erin Tier and Talo and Yena, August Tashakai, Dr. Quidigoshin, Scar Har and Herrn Kate Kuibli and a dig, Gun Gun Lace. Akan Alahi Lahi Avren, Erin 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 Kayas, Usajur, and figure these Luga, Kul Kate Trea Camila. Just go back to my question, Gumalishkin or Galarasharish, Tana Figurish in Lugagum, Toshiracha, Catherine and Shaw, five ninety three Toshiagum. Had Nurahonic and Plan Ganovis Cha, Had need the Custis of E. Gest, or even a Kisaja, a Gazohiv Custis and Alonia. I don't point to Shane Govilla to Shajig. Um, I don't have the numbers. Of, I don't have the business case okay. in front of me right here now. And, and that's okay. and I can yeah. appreciate that. And it's 17. I'm talking about. But yeah. I tell but you why I'm. Do you want the relocation costs? Yes, please. I can. Yeah. So yeah. the final cost of the relocation was 412,365. Uh, yeah. Uh, comprising three separate corporate moves into yes. the new building. Yeah. Furniture was 173,220. I, I have all that here. In a oh, you have all that? I have okay. all that. Let's, let's just me a minute. When the business case was made to move, yes. I'm trying to establish something here. A figure was given. So when I asked a question way back in September, I was given a figure of total 412,365, <coughs> total relocation costs. Is say 412 and 365 on Custis Umlon, Askrian, Ashlonu, Gaji Kian Kafru, Nuer Strad, Emians. Now, Neil Megiri, Neil Megiri, I'm not trying to catch somebody out. I, I'm, I'm trying to just highlight openness and accountability in relation to something. 
Forrest Nguilgen made a business case to you in 2016. I asked a question in September last year. You told me the total cost of moving was 412,364. They moved from two buildings. Isn't that right? They moved from Frederick Street and they moved from Marion Square and they went to Amian Street. And there was an enormous jump in the rent. There was. Good. There was. A, good. There was a, good, good. Enormous jump in the rent. There was also huge moving costs. Isn't that right? And the building that they moved into with the enormous rent now at 593,000, the previous tenant had paid just over 100,000 in that. Is that right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, just, uh, just I don't, you, I don't you, think you're comparing light with light. Oh, no, that's I think, okay. I'm going it, to I think let, it needs an explanation. I'm going to let you give, I, works carried absolutely, out. and I'm going to let you give all those explanations yeah. subject to the chair. I just want to establish facts here. So they move from two buildings, they go to Murray and uh, go to Amian Street. In addition, the Osh goes to Dunchoclin. Isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. So that all involves costs. They move into a premises where the previous tenant was paying just over 100,000, and this one is 593,000. Isn't that right? And, and I'm going to, I want to, I, when you explain, do you want to get the facts first? So there's a cost for Osh, there's a cost for Radio Nalifa moving, and all of that. Okay. Now, were ye aware as a department of all of this? That's my question is what I want to get to. You were monitoring of this. You were looking at this. Were you aware that the rent was 593,000 before any lease was signed? Did you give the permission for that? Were you aware that there were two agreements involved, one for rent and one then a separate agreement tying in the refurbishment costs into the rent, which seems very unusual. But so 15 years we're going to pay 593, a separate 15 years we're going to take 63,000 off that per year, plus 63 per year for the refurbishment counts at four quarterly repayments. So these are just facts. My question is, to me looking at it, seems an extraordinary way to do business, but my question to the department is, learning from Solace, and we're coming back to other things where I'm going to ask what your monitoring is in relation to the filling board and so on, but what is your monitoring structure? Tell me who's in charge, tell me who's monitored this move, who's looked at value for money, Mm. Just, uh, I want to give the, yeah. the, the questioner as much time as she needs as well. Um, but just in relation to the figures that you gave, just for clarity for myself and members of the committee, 400, just over 412,000 was the uh, cost of movement, moving. But then there was the, the lease had a rolling in fit out cost as well, we were told. Is that separate then from the 412,000? Yeah. Okay, so it's, we're dealing with two separate figures. That's okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, and take as much time as you need. I won't take it from the chalk to sign, but if, if context needs to be given, feel free to give it Mr McCormick or, or Ms Lick. I mean, I, I might say in terms of in terms of the the previous tenant and and now for us, um, it's a building I've passed every day going into work for the last 20 years. Um, it, it was a 1980s kind of vintage building. I would regard considerably dilapidated. And for us, the benchmark is what are, what are the rents? What are the rents that are on the market now? Not what were the previous rents under an old lease arrangement. And I think one of the things um, we've been looking at, if you look at the, the current market rates per square foot, um, Amian Street, if you take it at the 593 per annum, if you compare it with what you could be expected to get in Marion Square now, it would be about 800,000 per annum, or a Grade A Dublin City Centre, 1.3 million per annum. So we are at the mercy of the market when we are looking for accommodation. So we can't look at historical, I wish we could look at historical rent rolls, but... but Miss Licken, you know... Sure. I'm going to let you explain. I want, I want explanations for this, but I came from this as a person, Cahirla Geran Kosta, a Vibura Fui Kostas Moduli Kis, Agus Answin of Agus and Quinn Quapata Agamsa, Vixia Wadnis Efakti, Morgashta Ave Agania, Ve Agav. So I, I believe that you should have the building and a mortgage on it. That's what led me in to begin to look at this. So now I'm just asking you very specific questions. What monitoring, what did you look at? What did the business case say to you? 
When did you become aware there were two agreements? When did you become aware that in addition to the moving costs, there were all these other costs for the refurbishment of the building tied into the rent? I mean, please, comment on that for me now, as you will, without interruption from me. I, I think there's, um, first of all, the issue in relation to us purchasing a building or, or leasing a building, that's not within our, within our gift. It's the OPW that manages... Um, uh, that on behalf of the state. Um, so Did you approach the OPW? The OPW were approached, yeah. To um, buy a building or purchase um, a building? No, the OPW were approached by, by for us to see could they get an alternative accommodation given that the, the lease on the uh, on the building in Merrion Square yeah. was, was coming up. Um, the, the, the building in Merrion Square was, uh, was not fit for the... Okay. The, the, the needs of a modern um, I, modern I, I, just uh, go go now yeah. but what from like fragery at all module in the kitchen and he could have missed your heart after well, just, I, I think it's all cool ragum module on drug eric and the vags and he rose fell in up not in the kitchen at all cut ragum well I think on Cade Rudd now on Cumpera the tattoo of Yenavid or on Cade Mila a V Marquis or a Vigna of Rivishin Dorch Cantonation Rinu Galore Rinu Galore Ibra Cairn Tinter Galore Ibra Sulusul and Muval Nain in a shock of Virgil of Noom or Shaw, Dainter Ibra, Dinan and Antirna Talun, Talun, Ibra, Dainachi, Core Works, Maradar, and Ternchi, Hogan Chi Dorham, Agashina, Winnen Sle, Leshnabali, Tavishtigan, Confergnav, Lorodino, Sila, Lakhagas, Rodin Tai Shin, Agazikan and Ekan and Antirna Talun, Asna, the Hybra Kashin, Agas and Shin, Dinter, Dinter Ibra Ella, Akhoru. Um, a yen and some tear in the talon fella er 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 our law or a she law because at the whole category and shin got ibroke a yen and some tear in the talon also stum hein or because ekin sas na costa she or because current she shin shin let costas case um and and different either on kaid meal at that us a kind free agus and figure a hag and she dig er in der er in dera take a mission take on kaid what was the monitoring what was the oversight process by the department in relation to this building. When did you become aware there were two agreements? When did you become aware that one agreement said a rent and the second agreement said we're going to tie in the refurbishment costs into the rent? No, just th these are questions. So the, I, I, if to restore faith, and I heard what you said, you want to learn, and I want to yeah. support the department. Now here's an example again. I just. What, please, somebody t there tell me, you sat down, you were aware from day one that this was happening, or you weren't, or when did you become aware? Is it value for money? Was it tendered out? Is part of the building still empty? It, oh, where is the business case? Where was the review? Please. Glan with the Glan and Darien, when it's a show, Lesh and Dar, Clean Show and Clean Show, who is in Clean Show? So Glan and Dar, for a business case, Costco, Oscar and Darien, August Glan and Darien, and Costco, Egan, Egan Arm. August Kane, Piadid, the Costas, a VSG, and Plan Ganotian. No, Vecorum Gulchi, Neil and Costin, and Plan Gano, Agamos, Osma Kors, a Vecorum, the Costasina, all that. And will she have sauced them? Go will she have eranolus module quinerod? And will she have sauce to go will look arrogant against? And how she have eranolus on tooth? Were you there from the beginning? Were you aware of the process from the very beginning as a department, having learned from Galway and other situations? Because this will come up with the Irish Film Board, with all of the other mm -hmm. bodies, very good bodies, that we give money to, the actual monitoring. I'm sure the other co my colleagues are going to come back to all of this in a minute. And in fact, the Irish Film Board <coughs> gives money to Solace. <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Anyway, just stick with my question for the moment. Well, I'll finish here. I know I'm over my time. Takoros monitor Octania, Cassan and Doreen, Lesha Voris, August Leshen, Board of Ulster Scotch, Scots, Kedro Orsam Lee, and Lugul Treat, Gakro, the Vins are Bunan. So being with their own owners, we got Rosh, and Rosh, and their own owners, go round go. Uh, agreements. Cabi Brano Shear, Er Kedavisa Kanat, Koskano, Tugul Shear Govlin, Kedavisa Kosk. No, Neil Megul Shear Govlin, and Neil Megul Kish. Sorry, Blin, those came Blin. Neil Megul Tusha Show, Rod Lua. Just was any alarm bells alerted to you any in relation? Just see if you've learned from Solace, if you learn from Solace and your training staff. And I appreciate your training staff and all of that, and you're going forward. Alarm bells start ringing for every for everything. Then, wh wh where is this money being used? How is it being used? How are we monitoring it, and so on? I, 
think if I, I just don't have the business case in front of me, Deputy, yeah. but, but certainly to say that the business case would have come to us. Um, we would have been looking at it in comparison with market rates. Did this, did, did this represent value for money in comparison to the market rates that were available um, in the city at the time? Um, and that was the judgment. Now, whether we actually had the detail okay. of the two separate arrangements, I, I can come back to you on that. I just, okay. I just don't have it in front of me, unfortunately. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm over my time. So just, I really would appreciate if you would come back to us so that we can all learn. Yeah. I would also, I think, come back to the controller and auditor general later to look at this project, to see is it value for money mm -hmm. in terms of rent. I think it's something we should be looking at so we can learn from it. Because obviously, there's a huge danger that this has been repeated. Mm. in lots of other areas that, that comes under your remit and every other department's remit. Mm -hmm. So, Chukimir Rasha, going to be in a mug.